Hello everybody and welcome. Just today, uh, but uh, weeks since we've, I mean, it'll be weeks since we played, but just today as the day of recording, weeks as you're watching, Eric and I finished the Dunwich Legacy for the first time and it was a blast. We had a great time. Um, and I wanted to get Eric's thoughts as a new player because we didn't talk, like we did re uh, scenario reviews after we finished them, but especially when we were first playing with this, we didn't really talk about our thoughts on it on like the initial plays. So I think we'll just dive in scenario by scenario, campaign as a whole. This is Eric's first campaign. So notably, I think the biggest thing is for people who've played a lot, um, Dunwich has a lot of people who uh, their weaknesses are more apparent when you play more. However, I did kind of sugarcoat some of those weaknesses. And I think also playing as Stella was a very fun way of doing it because uh, basically like you, you got to like the best part of it because there's some weird things like as a fighter, you actually can like sometimes just have nothing to do mm -hmm. in certain scenarios. But that actually like never happened. It was, it was a very, it was actually probably one of my favorite Dunwich Legacy campaigns in a while. So I'm very excited to see what Eric has to say. And then also like if we eventually ever replay it, how things might change. So this is like a time capsule, of, excuse me, of sorts of as well. So Eric, did you enjoy the Dunwich Legacy? I loved the Dunwich Legacy. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. Um, I The only thing I have to compare it to is the Lord of the Rings living card game, mm -hmm. uh, where the scenarios uh, felt really alive and really powerful. Uh, and this blew it out of the water. This is better, <laughs> I think, in terms of making you feel like you're actually doing the thing yeah. than any of the Lord of the Rings living card game I've ever played, except for that dumb one where you fight under the hills against the horrors from beneath. Oh, yeah. And they just squish you. Yeah. You just die. Yeah, I do think, yeah, like, narratively, this game is really good. Uh, there, I don't think it'll be hard to beat the one. Is that the one where you, we get, we go down in the river, we get split up and we're each at the bottom and we're like, yeah, that's one of the best, like, camp, like, it's just, you know, all the narrative stuff, that's such a cool scenario. Yeah. Yeah, and this and this I feel was better than that. Yeah, oh, and that one's still my favorite. It's like it tells such a good I story. That. Yeah, it's good. But, it's great. Yeah. But this consistently, it felt like the mechanics reflected the story I was being told. Definitely, and the locations felt good, especially as they clearly got comfortable with what they were doing from mm -hmm. the train on mm -hmm. and just started going hog wild with how locations yeah. interacted and intersected and played with their own format as a way to make Lost in Time and Space so good. Yeah, I mean, Lost in Time and Space is a very fun and unique one because uh, even watching you put pieces together being like, um, wait a minute. I'm gonna be we're gonna be moving locations around and then be like oh there's no locations how do we get locations oh we have to discard what the frick you know like it's yeah. it's very strange and there were a lot of times when you even said it's like oh they're really doing something cool here yeah 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 so we yeah um so then kind of like going through like actually before we go into scenario by scenario are there any like memorable moments like narrative wise or even like emergence gameplay wise or even just like gameplay wise not even related to the narrative like any sort of like things that stick out with you that you remember our one loss felt really good the train yeah in essex county yeah um our one loss felt really good i hadn't experienced a loss in one of these campaigns before where we kept playing afterwards mm -hmm. i really love the mechanics of the losses and the fact that you can continue going sometimes that mm -hmm. felt really good um i really did love how locations intersected and how they were able to tell a story and a mm -hmm. sense of like getting deep into a place or getting lost in a place mm -hmm. that was really fun um uh i i really enjoy that there is this weird benefit tension that i felt in the game and i don't know if this is true of all of them but in this game there's this weird benefit tension of either we're in the same location and that's awesome mm -hmm or we're leaving the same location and then having to race back home, yeah. which felt really good too. It really created this sense of like, of safety. I loved, I loved, I think the highlight of this campaign for me was the the one where we <laughs> ran around just monster hunting Watley babies. Oh, the Undimensioned and Unseen. I yeah. loved that one. Yeah. That was so good. It, I really felt like I was just like, struggling with a world that was increasingly yeah. getting weird while these weird 
baby monsters were just yeah. messing the place up. Yeah, that one's very. That's interesting to hear because that one is like a lot of people don't like that one. Oh. I I do. I I mean I can respect the fact that I remember when I was watching, I was like, man, Eric's having a really fun time in this scenario. I was just like playing. I was like, Eric's having a blast. I think a big part of that it was Stella was a very fun investigator to play in that scenario. But I think you just really embraced the mood of it. Like, you didn't think about the mechanics of the situation. You were just like in, you were in, you had the thematic story in your head that was kind of like taking the wheel, right? Yeah, and that's what I felt the whole time playing this. Mm -hmm. Because they're so good at binding every location card, every event, every sequence to mm -hmm. each other, I just kept getting lost and I was like, I don't, we, I don't know what the, are we losing? I don't know. There's big baby monsters running all over the fields. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Sick. So let's just dive in scenario by scenario and kind of just chat a bit about it. I'll give you a reminder of what they were. The first one we played was extracurricular activity. That's the one where we're on the Miskatonic University campus looking for Professor Warren Rice. <clears throat> and uh, eventually, I mean, there's like the Yog Soth off there, there's the Whippoorwills, and then there's that weird dog that like shows up that we both ran from and saved the students. Uh, how did that one, did that one paint a good picture for you? Or is that one just kind of like you were too busy learning the game to really embrace it? I liked it at the time. I think it's the weakest, mm -hmm. especially in later, especially in later sessions when you're like, I'm an investigator who is punching my way through space and time and sealing rifts with the power of my mind. Mm -hmm. Why were these locked doors stopping me? Yeah. It felt so weak mm -hmm. by comparison to everything else that appeared. Is that potentially a cool thing though, where it's like the idea that it starts mundane and then grows into bigger threats as it goes. Is there any sort of like potential positivity to that in your mind? No. Nah. No? I think if they had made some of the locks like an arcane lock, as they eventually used in later stories to mm -hmm. explain why you couldn't just burst them open, I think it would have made more sense. But by being, I think, what felt like the most grounded one and having weird monsters pop up for an early, mm -hmm. an early Lovecraftian horror, like the monsters did not feel like they scaled with the campaign. Mm -hmm. Those early monsters were super weird mm -hmm. on a human campus yeah. full of human students. Mm -hmm. I still liked it. I still enjoyed it, but yeah. I definitely felt like it was the weakest. So then we did House Always Wins next, which is the one where we're gambling, and then eventually we go into the back rooms where there's mobsters, and then the monsters attack the club where we're trying to find uh, Dr. Francis Morgan. Did you enjoy that one? Loved that one. Mm -hmm. So to, to speak to the difference between that one and the previous one, um, once again, the mobsters felt very scary. It mm -hmm. felt very uncomfortable. I was really worried about being in this place full of human enemies, and it felt like the right level of, I am an early investigator, uh, one of the reasons I can't just blow open this lock with magic force or Mark Harrigan's shoulder is because there are literal gangsters with guns and they will shoot me to death. Mm -hmm. um, and then having the monsters show up there felt really good too because I got to see the monsters be terrifying mm -hmm. with the with the humans and i got to feel this sense of okay we are a bit special because this is still terrifying mm -hmm. uh saving the dude was a lot of fun it was really tough so saving the dude is actually very hard to do yeah uh because it made it so that we had no more mobsters for the rest if you don't save the dude mobsters will kind of just poke their heads in throughout the rest of the campaign um so that was kind of sick. I was impressed with that because I always do House Always Wins first because it's much harder to do second. Mm. And extracurricular activity is easier to do second. Uh, so I was just like, I didn't want to influence the decision, but I mean, it worked out. We got yeah. the we got the win. Um, but I loved it as a, as, a, as a story. Did you like the gambling at the start of it? I did. Yeah. That was a lot of fun, it's to be honest. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a fun one. Uh, then we did the Miskatonic Museum where we're exploring the museum and then there's that the slithering hunting horror that kept attacking us. Yeah. I thought that one was fun. That one didn't feel as strong thematically to me. I yeah. also, um, I know some people are afraid of snakes, but to me, the idea of a giant snake in a museum, I'm just like, okay. Yeah, it's just, that's just an exhibit, baby. Yeah. What? What? That's yeah. just an exhibit. Yeah. Should have brought some rabbits. Yeah. Um, it was fun, though. It was okay. It yeah. was... I don't think it was particularly special in any way. That one can be a bad time as a fighter because you can sometimes just have nothing to do. I believe it. And that, that kind of did happen, but, I mean, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Yeah. Uh, then we do... Which I know, I'm sure you love the one. If I've been paying attention to context clues. Essex County Express when you're on the train. I've heard that this one is not considered well loved, but I and and I, I just cannot imagine why. Mm -hmm. It was so fun to 
see what felt like a really clear motion forward and then to start having the train get ripped away and have my mm -hmm. like my adrenaline start pumping and my understanding that we were way shorter on time than I thought we were. Mm -hmm. And to also have the deck not be afraid to just stop you, which is what ended up having happening to us. Yes, and that's like, why we ended up getting sucked up into space. Yeah, and, and losing because it took two train cars. I was yeah. just like, it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. We lost regardless. We, I had fucked up so much in the beginning without realizing it, just having a good time on this train, yeah. that even if we had been in the next train car over, we were out. And I loved that. So a big reason why people have a problem with that one is in four players, you can actually just sometimes get a draw that kills you on turn one. <laughs> so like, it's kind of like that kind of sucks, right? But Okay, but, uh, but, uh, but, and I will say this, thematically, if someone shoots a hole in time and space at you and you're on a train, yeah, you lost. You yeah. lost first round. You're on a track. Yeah, you're gonna get sucked up. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't put the portal in front of us. They should have, really. They yeah. really should have. Uh, okay, what about, so the next thing we do is Blood on the Altar, where we're in Dunwich, we have to find the key in the hidden chamber. When the, the citizens of Dunwich don't like us, then we have to find, we find the Silas Bishop, or, yeah, Silas Bishop down in the basement, the big monster man. I like that one. Mm -hmm. I like that one. It felt really good. Again, it felt a little weird to be like hunting for a key in a non-magic scenario and blah, blah, blah. But having the villagers there too felt mm -hmm. really good. Uh, it was also the beginning of what I think is some of the strongest up until um, one particular factor in Sentinel Hill. Um, it, it just, the mood changed. It really mm -hmm. felt like you were isolated. And it was mm -hmm. really cool to start seeing like how they were going to take the story post, um, post Lovecraft mm -hmm. and like re-explore Watley. So I really enjoyed that. Sick. And then we had Undimension and Unseen where we're facing the Yogi babies. Love it. Love it. I'm sorry. I don't know why people don't like it. They emerge from this one area. They swarm over the town. You have to have these weird interactions with locations that require clue gathering, but there's something for the fighters to do. Mm -hmm. um, the villagers are constantly losing their shit and sending yeah. you all over the place. I was like, this is what I want. Like, mm -hmm. if, if there have to be big monsters in my Lovecraft, I've always... Okay, another, another thing to reveal. I've always been a fan of Lovecraftian stories where, unlike the way that Arkham does it, um, you can't kill the horrors. Mm -hmm. A human versus a ghoul is a losing fight. Mm -hmm. A human versus a yog so uh, uh, a shoggoth, you're dead. Mm -hmm. um, so this game, like a lot of other games, causes me to need to suspend my disbelief in terms of how much someone like Mark Harrigan can do in a circumstance. And that was the first time I've ever been like, yeah, I like this choice. Mm -hmm. I'm into this choice. We can kill these dumb little half Watley babies. Yeah but we can't stop them from destroying the fields and yeah. letting all the pigs out. I mean, it is very much a, a different kind of fighting, right? Like, it's more about, like, using magic to seal them away and, like, yeah. slowly wither them away than it is, like, blowing them up with dynamite. Exactly, yeah. and I loved that. Yeah. So then we were on Where Doom Awaits, the one we recorded today first. We were climbing up the hill. So that one I like. I think that one does a really good job. The biggest weakness... In case, you know, Fantasy Flight watches religiously every every video you post. <laughs> I would say that the biggest weakness for me in Dunwich Horror is that it replays some of the same beats in a couple of the different campaign snippets. Mm -hmm. So in the Watley Farm, we started to watch the environment twist and become strange. But then in Sentinel Hill, some of the theme was that again. Mm -hmm. Like some of the thing about the altered terrain was meant mm -hmm. to feel spooky again. Yeah. But then we'd also had that in the mobster situation where you go to the back and then the monsters appear. Mm -hmm. And then we'd also had that with Silas Bishop. Yeah, and the train. And the train. Yeah. And so it was just like, okay, so it was the weakest, I think, of all of the... Um, Things get weird. Yeah. I think generally a big complaint that I think is quite fair for Dunwich is that it kind of feels like a monster of the week sort of thing. Yeah. You know? And that's and that's definitely that vibe. Yeah. That said, the whole locations not being interconnected and having to go through the tangle. I love that about Dunwich. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then the last one, the final scenario, Lost in Time and Space. Oh, so good. Yeah. Especially, and I hate to say it, but especially after Sentinel Hill, I was kind of ready for a, a down a downgrade or just like a boss is in the middle of the room go deal with it mm -hmm. i loved the building doom as i realized yog sothoth was going to appear yeah and when it when when yog sothoth was going to appear i loved being like oh okay i get it and then this 
place spawns with the only clues and there's no connection. I'm just like, yeah. How do I? How do I navigate time and space? <laughs> I love the amount of mill that it did. As a as a um, I'm there's a there's another YouTuber. I'm not gonna YouTube drop names because I don't know if we do no, that. No, go for it. Go for it. Uh, I think it's Ristic Stud or Rice Rice. Oh, Ristic Studies. Ristic Studies, who talks about because um, yeah, some of the best uh, made magic videos out there. Best yeah. made magic videos, and he uh, they uh, talked about. I should know that they. Um, <laughs> uh, they yeah, it's, it's a, <laughs> don't come at me. <laughs> I don't really have social media. Um, um, they uh, they did this beautiful one that talked about mill versus discard as a form mm -hmm. of insanity versus losing one's mind, mm -hmm. and what these things kind of symbolized. And so to go into uh, go into lost in time and space and have all this mill effect occurring mm -hmm. and all this like by the way the more you lose the harder it hurts mm -hmm. suddenly start appearing at the end of it in even bigger numbers yeah I was just like okay this feels this is the first time that the encounter deck has really felt mm -hmm. like it is connected mm -hmm. to what's happening on the table mm -hmm. and then watching you fight through it at the very end and just barely scrape through felt really good too yeah it was like a movie um, I'm very excited to see what you think of Carcosa, because Carcosa is, like, I, I don't, I try not to, like, hype people up, but it has some of the coolest, it's like, the scenarios are more thematic, and it also has thematics between the scenarios as well. It's like a perfect thing. I mean, we're going to have for a great s stretch of campaigns here. Dunnage is actually probably one of the weaker ones in the grand scheme of things um yeah so if you enjoyed it this much hopefully you'll okay, carry over to the next ones and you'll enjoy those ones even more so how many campaigns are there dunwich carcosa forgotten age circle undone dream eaters insmith conspiracy edge of the earth scarlet keys so there's eight full campaigns right now and they're still releasing more so there's probably gonna be one more this year and then they usually release one a year so you could make an entire career out of just YouTubing this. Yeah, who, who'd have thunk, right? Who'd have thunk? <laughs> yeah. 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 The yeah. eyes. I got what I wanted. I got the eyes. Um, but yeah, uh, let us know uh, if you enjoyed this video and you want us to do it again when we finish off Carcosa. Spoiler alert, we're gonna. <laughs> um because as, as Eric said, I've made a YouTube career out of this. So we got to make the video. There's got to be a video on some Sunday when we finish Path of Carcosa. There just has to be. If there isn't, what's what's this all been about? Right? What's this all been about? What has it been about? Uh, other than that, thank you so much for watching, you beautiful bags of bones. Have a good one. And as always, a GG's.